fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! Jim Travis owned the store in Travis Corners. He also owned the cafe and the gambling hall. He practically owned the town and ran things to suit himself. When pioneers brought covered wagons to a final halt in the lush valleys near the town, Travis sold them what they wanted at his own prices. And then those pioneers decided to move on. Partly finished houses were abandoned. Horses were brought from pasture and hitched to Conestoga wagons. Worldly goods were packed for travel, and settlers, disappointed in their first choice of a place to settle, made ready to shove on. Get the wagons in line, boys. Same order we had before. Get the line up. Same order as before. Hold on, boys. Hank, I do hope you've made the right decision. I hope so, Kate. It's a downright big responsibility to have to decide what's right for all these people. Put a lot of trust in your decisions. How soon we start now, Hank? Soon as the wagons are in line. Uh, tell the boys to be sure they got a plenty of water. Right, Hank. Hank, look who's hey, coming this way. Water, yeah. Travis himself, and he's got that half breed with him. You must have heard we plan to clear out of here. Yeah. Hank, here comes Travis and McGill. So I see. We'll back you in anything you say to the thieving polecat, Hank. All right, boys. <laughs> hey there, what's going on? What's it look like, Travis? You're not leaving this valley. We sure are. We're fed up with things around here, Travis. You must be local. Where else can you find such fine soil and pasture and good water? The main thing that's wrong, Travis, is you and your friends like Miguel here. And that gambling place. And the prices you charge for everything. Now, hold on. Travis, you had a smart game. You had your pals convince us that this was the place to settle down and build homes. But as soon as we started building, you began charging us five times what things were worth and trying to get the rest of our cash with your cafe and gambling hall. Well, we're leaving before it's too late. Before you get all we own. Yeah, I see. Well, of course, it's up to you. You bet it is. Come on, boys. we got a lot of travel before sunset. Get aboard, Kate. <laughs> Goodbye, Travis. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Close it, girl. It's 
Senor Travis. It's bad. They all go. Take much money with them. Yeah. And Miguel, I should have had the money they take. Si, senor. Maybe I'll get it yet. Uh-huh. How you plan to get it, senor? Miguel, you know where to find the boys in the hills, don't you? Oh, si, si. I go for them, huh? Yeah. Go for them right now. Tell them I'll be waiting in the cafe. They'll be interested in what I want them to do to a wagon train. As the wagons rolled away from the valley, Travis returned to the settlement at the crossing of the trails, and Miguel rode into the hills on the south. Sometime later, a masked man and an Indian came to the crest of the hills just north of Travis Corners. It was the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend, Tonto. Who's who's got so far? So far, I like that word. There, town of Travis Corner. Tonto, never mind the town. Look at the valley. Uh, Plenty of houses started. Started, but that's all. There's not a single one completed. No one around. That's right. Where are the people who are building those homes? Their horses and wagons. Me not know. Tonto, I've heard things about Jim Travis. Me hear him too. I wonder if he's driven the pioneers away from their new homes. Maybe we find out, huh? See what you can learn. I'll uh, make a camp over there in the cottonwoods. Me see you there by and by. Good. Get him up, scout. All right, boy, come around. Come on. During the remainder of the afternoon, Tonto learned little in response to his guarded inquiries. It was early in the evening when he went into the cafe where Jim Travis sat at a corner table. The Lone Ranger's Indian friend took a position nearby and presently saw two hard-faced men come in and join the owner of the establishment. Hi, Travis. McGill, get a hold of you all right, huh? Sit down, Slim. You too, Gunner. Yeah. <laughs> The breed told us a few things, Travis. About the pioneers pulling stakes? Yeah. What's that got to do with us? Slim, uh, I've been doing favors for you and your outfit for some time. Now you want to be repaid, is that it? That's it. I can use your gunslingers. Start talking. I guess you savvy how I've had agents planted along the way east of here to tell people what a first-rate community this is. <laughs> What's funny, Gunner? First-rate community. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You get them to come here so you can get most of their cash in your gambling place and put them in debt to you when they need things at your store. That's my business. <laughs> You're a prosperous business, I'd call it. You needn't call it anything. Get them up to their ears in debt to you and then take their land when they've improved it. <laughs> You're pretty slick. Shut up, Gunner. <laughs> Here's the point, Slim. Those wagons headed over the trail to the east. If they get as far as Fort Bradley, the people will spread the word about Travis Corners. They'll uh, probably stop other pioneers from coming here. And I want other people to come here. Uh, I should think you would. You want the wagon train ambushed. Yes. Do you have enough men to handle it? We have, if we can take them by surprise. Suppose we don't take them by surprise. If those nesters have time to pull their wagons into a circle to fight and fortify themselves, they might pick us all off. Yeah. If you nail them in Ribbon Canyon, they won't be able to form a circle. That's right. That's a good place. They can't even turn around when they get there. Are you uh, willing to take the job, Slim? What's in it? Those pioneers left here with plenty of cash. I didn't get half of what they brought with them. That'll do. How about the horses and the rest of the stuff? You can have everything they've got. I'll get mine when other pioneers come with. It's a deal. Uh, just a minute. I... What do you want, Miguel? Senor, you speak low, but be still too loud. What do you mean? I watch till I'm sure what I say. There is Indian who listen to what you say. Where? On the left side, behind you. I can see him. Yeah. You boys go into the private office. I'll be there in just a minute with the Indian. You know where it is? Yeah. Come on, Gunner. All right. You go along with him, Miguel. 
I can handle things here. Sí, sí, señor. <laughs> You're a stranger around here, aren't you, Injun? Uh, me come for food. So I see. I suppose you come into my office. I want to talk to you. Uh, what you want? You'll find out when you get there. Just stand up and do what I say. Uh, gun, huh? Sneak gun. It's small, but poison at close range. And nobody hears a gun when I shoot at my own place. They just shut their ears and eyes to what I do, you savvy? Uh, that get up now. Uh, the officer's right through that door. We can talk nice and private when we get in there. I let you take that gun out of your holster so as you won't get careless ideas. Right through that door. That's it. We got company, huh, Travis? Close the door, Slim. What's he doing here anyway, Travis? Snooping. Watch your redskin. Oh, uh, me not talk. Better watch him close. He's eyeing the window. Have hey, hey, watch him. Grab him. Don't let him get away. Miguel, get him. See? Oh. Good work. See, I fix him. You laid him cool with your gun, but Miguel. Yeah. Is he dead? I find out. Serves him right for snooping like he was. How about him, Miguel? Oh, he's alive. You better time up. But, senor, why not finish him? I want to ask him a few questions when he comes to. But I'm not going to take chances on another break. He might get away the next time. Time up and stay right in this office and guard him. Si, uh, si, senor. Slim, uh, the rest of your outfit nearby? Yep. They're waiting for me. Come on, I'll go with you. You mean to ambush the wagons? Yeah, Gunny. That's what I mean, you got any objections? No, no, of course not. The sooner we get started, the better. If that uh, redskin gets away, Miguel, I'll hold you responsible. He will not get away, senor. You need not fear that. When I get back, I'll question him. After that, you can finish the job you started. camp on the hill, the Lone Ranger saw the men ride out of town in the moonlight. He waited a little while, and then when Tonto did not return, set out to find his Indian friend. Meanwhile, Tonto had recovered consciousness to find himself tied hand and foot on the floor of the office in the cafe. Miguel sat on a chair watching him closely. Perhaps you will tell me why you come here to listen, eh? Me not talk. Senor Travis think you will talk when he come back. But me, Miguel, will surprise him. I will get the information from you before he return. You talk now? Me not talk. So, I show you what we do with stopping him. In. You see this knife? Santa Maria! Robert! You, I show you! My arm! You shouldn't try to throw a knife at a man who holds a gun. He got plenty to shake him, Sabi. That door locks. Uh, I'll get you out of there, Tonto, as soon as I get this window open. Stay where you are, Miguel. Uh, me know you come. Saw a lot of men right out of town, Tonto. Uh, Pappas play an ambush of wagon train. You, you are a mask. Stay in your corner and keep quiet. You can use that knife on Tonto's ropes. Crook catch wagon train at Ribbon Canyon. Got to do something about that. There you are, Tonto. Silver's right outside with your horse. Help! Help! You Robbie! shut up! This way, Tonto, out the window. Give me the facts as we travel. Uh, crook ambush wagon train. Kill. Hey, look! The window! Big well knocked out. Get those two out there! Oh, fire! Let's go! curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
And now to continue our story. The pioneers had traveled all day and part of the first night. They resumed their journey at daybreak. Meanwhile, Travis and his gunman had ridden hard and circled wide to reach the canyon ahead of the long line of wagons. From their place of concealment, they saw the wagons approach in late afternoon. <laughs> there they are, Slim. Are the boys in position? Yep. We're all set. Let all the wagons get into the canyon. Then we'll open fire. Tell the rest of the boys to be ready. Come on, Gunner. Right. Start the boys be ready. Hank and Kate were on the seat of the leading wagon, completely unaware of the danger that lay ahead. Ribbon Canyon's just ahead, Kate. You think we can get through it tonight, Hank? I aim to try. That valley east of the canyon's a good place to settle. That's where we're heading. We should have stayed there. We would have if those scouts we met hadn't told us such fine things about Travis Corners. Huh. Fine things. Hank, look over yonder. Two horsemen. One of them's an Indian. They're angling right toward us. And Hank, one of those men wears a mask. Easy, Silver. Easy, boy. Easy, boy. Wait up, sir. I want to talk to you. Keep back. Keep away. Don't you try to rob us. Wait up, I tell you. I'm not trying to rob you. You're heading for an ambush. Hank, did he say ambush? You'll be trapped in Ribbon Canyon. Hank, you'd better stop and hear what he has to say. Right up there. Right up. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh boy. Now, what's that you're trying to tell us, mister? Travis has a lot of gunmen ready to ambush you. Why would he do this? He doesn't want you to let the troopers at Fort Bradley know what kind of a scheme he has in Travis Corners. He wants other pioneers to go there as you did. I don't know whether we should believe you or not. Nothing will be lost by putting your wagons into a circle and waiting here until daybreak. That makes sense to me. And me, ma'am. Me, too. We're in no particular hurry, Hank. All right, we'll do it. Form a circle, boys. We're stopping here for the night. Pass the word. Get up there. Come on. Get up there, boys. Come on. Meanwhile, Travis and his men watched from the shelter of rocks near the mouth of the canyon. You poor luck, cursed luck. Well, it's the same Indian, Travis. It's the critter we left with Miguel. Who's the masked man with him? I don't know, and it doesn't matter. The Redskins told those people about our plans. That's obvious. They'll form your circle for defense. And they'll hold it as long as they can. Well, here's some form to think about. Gunner! We gotta get them now. Get them before they can get the wagons in the circle. Gunner's right. Open up, boys! Fire on them! Get those wagons in place. Don't stop to return the fire. Those men are in ambush. He's right. We can't hit what we can't see. Circle around, boys. Get up there. Get around there. Come on. Come on. While rifle bullets streaked through canvas tops and butted into the plank sides, the wagons were moved into a tight circle around the horses and the people. Oh, ho, ho, ho there. Oh, All right. Come on. Get those horses oh. unharnessed. Yep. Quickly. Here. <laughs> I guess you sure know what you were talking about, mister. Sure did, mister. It'll be hard for those men to hit any of you as long as you stay inside the circle. But for how long? I don't know, ma'am. We can't get those skunks out of ambush. No, Hank. Say, Hank, we may run short of water. I thought we had considerable. Yeah, we've got enough for a day or so. That's about all. And you'll have to use it sparingly. How about attacking the Travis outfit? No, you'd have to move through the open space between here and the canyon. You wouldn't have a chance. Why are they so bound and determined to get us? We've never done anything to hurt them. Travis has a profitable scheme, ma'am. He doesn't want you people to spoil it by spreading word of what happened to you. The ornery buzzard. Their fort on the other side of canyon. The fort. That's right, Fort Bradley. If we could get help from there. But how can we, Hank? There's no way to get through the canyon. I'm going to try to reach Fort Bradley. You not go through canyon. I've got to, Tonto. The hills on the sides of the canyon are impassable. The canyon trail is the only way to reach the fort. But you can't make it. Those murderers will see you across the open space between here and the canyon. They'll drop you before you get halfway to the canyon. Maybe not, Hank. Well, you can't risk it. I should say not. There's no call for you to lose your life for us. We're all in this together. If anyone's to make a dash for it, I'll try it myself. And better me try it. A younger man would have a better chance, Hank. I'll make the try. If my horse is faster than yours, I'll do it. I think Silver's the best horse. Now, I'm going to make the try, but you men will have to help me. Well, tell us what to do. Sure, how can we help? 
How many black saddle horses have you in this outfit? Well, uh, I'd say about eight or nine. Uh, have the owners of those horses put on their darkest clothes and get ready to ride. You mean leave the shelter of the wagons? Yes. There'll be no moon tonight. It'll be quite dark. I want men to leave the wagons as quietly as possible and ride to the right, heading toward the hills. You said no one could get through the hills. Yes, that's true. The ambushers are to think you're going to try for the hills. They may not see you at first. If they do realize where you're going, they'll rush in that direction to cut you off. That may give me a chance to reach the canyon. Uh, what about the boys that head for the hills? As soon as they hear me leave, they get back to these wagons. Some of them may get hurt. We'll take that chance. We're not taking half the chance that you are, masked man. That white horse of yours will make a good target no matter how dark it is. Well, you have about half an hour to get ready. Right. In 30 minutes, the night was dark. The men in dark clothes and their dark horses were barely visible as they stood near a gap in the circle of wagons. But the Lone Ranger's snow-white stallion stood out clearly. You men ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. You want us to start right now? Yes. Mount up and ride as quietly as possible. Go far to the side. When you're finally noticed, I want those men in ambush to think you're trying to get through the hills. Please, yes, sir. As soon as you hear me start, come back here and fast. From then on, there's nothing we can do but wait and hope. Now, go ahead. All right. Come on, boys. Mount up. Uh, there they go. May heaven protect them. Silver, not like stay behind. Silly boy, you'll have your chance in just a minute. Mister, I don't know why you're risking your life to help us. You risked your lives to come to the West and settle a new country? Yeah, but this The West is... needs men who will drive out Travis and his kind. That one a gang. They've spotted our boys. Just a few seconds now. Tell her an ambush. Go away from Canyon. You can see the flashes of their guns. They're rushing toward our men. Oh, hang, hang. Plenty hard to hit them in dark. Well, Silver, our chance, boy. Steady, big fella. One, Silver. Silver started like an arrow from a bow. Over, big fella. He streaked toward the Canyon entrance and covered half the distance before Steady, the yo. surprise of dry gulches realized what had happened. Steady. When Travis and those with him saw the racing figure, they changed the direction of their gunfire. Over, big fella. Quick. Caught off guard at a distance, the schemers at first fired erratically. Then they took more careful aim. Their shots came close to the Lone Ranger, but the masked man was at the gap. Then in the canyon, and an instant later, past the danger point. Now, Silver, our big fellow are going to Fort Bradley. Come on, Silver! On and on raced the great white stallion, his muscles bunching beneath his shimmering skin. On through the night, toward the distant fort and the help that was so sorely needed by the pioneers. Come on, Silver! Meanwhile, Travis and his companions were furious when they realized the trick that had been played on them. They directed heavy gunfire on the circle of wagons. Wait a minute! Hold the fire! Hold the fire! Travis, oh, hard to talk! What's up? Boys, listen to me. We'll take turns resting and shooting. Half of you keep up a steady fire while the rest sleep. Then switch. We'll see that those people don't get the chance to relax. Some of our shots are sure to do damage. All right. Why not attack them? We'll attack after they've been worrying all night. All right. We'll attack just before daybreak. Now open fire and keep it going. Not too fast, but steady. The long hours of the night dragged slowly, with intermittent bullets thudding into wagons and occasionally inflicting damage on a member of the little band. Oh, Hank, we we can't tolerate this much longer. We've got to tolerate it, Kate. We've got to hold out until that masked man gets here with help. Hey, Tonto. Uh, uh, how long do you think it'll take your friend to reach the fort? Oh, uh, me not know. Hey, Hank, I got some bad news. Yeah? How many have been hit? Several. But that's not the worst of it. The water's gone. Uh, That's worse than it seems. The day will be a scorcher. We can't go long without water. Well, if there's no water, we'll just have to do without it. How How soon will the sun rise? Uh, it won't be long, ma'am. Dawn is going to break in less than half an hour. I... Hey, listen. Gunfire hard. What does that mean? I don't know. I can't... Under... 
It's an attack. This is where we got to fight. Take your places, men. Women load the rifles. The gunmen rode to all sides of the wagons and then dismounted and flopped to the ground to make difficult targets. They inched their way closer, ever closer, while they maintained a steady fire. The defenders did their best, but it seemed like a hopeless ordeal. He'll charge us any minute. Be ready for it. Fight them hand to hand if necessary. I'm nearly out of I'm going to make We can't survive an attack. Right. Here they come. This is the charge. Hey, it's your bugle. I hear it. Soldier come. Condor's right. Look over there. The canyon. The masked man did it. He brought the army. There they come. Now we'll lick the Travis man. Let them have it, boys. Give them all we got. With the arrival of the Lone Ranger and the troopers that followed his lead, the fight came to a fast conclusion. As dawn streaked the eastern sky, the last of the attackers became a captive, and it was Travis himself. Get the wagons in line, boys. Same order we had before. Access to line up. Same order as before. Who's going, boys? Hank, I do hope you've made the right decision. Right decision, Kate? <laughs> you bet we have. With Travis and his gang on the way to jail, we can go back to Travis Corners and finish the houses we started. You sure we'll have no more trouble, Hank? You bet I'm sure of it. I was told so by that masked man that's just mounting up over there. And he should know. He's the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.